he called me. I didn't need anything. I didn't need anything. I didn't need to be anything. That's what he said. So that no flesh can glory in his presence. So I am what I am today because God called me. He saw Gideon hiding and he said, Thou mighty man of valor. He called me Thou mighty man of valor. Not because I have anything mighty in myself, but because he can't. He saw me and said, There's somebody, there's, a, there's an image I predestined you to be. And you are going to become it if you stay with me. So I want us to just love up on God because without him, surely we are nothing. But in him, we can become anything and everything. We can attain to the fullness of God. We can become love. We can, end, we can embody his nature. Everything that he is, we can become it just because he died, just because he loved us. He poured his affection on me. So nothing, say who can, who shall bring a charge against the Lord's elect? It is God that justifies. Jose Kabazo Shakaraka. So I want to love God, love upon God today. Jose Kabazo Shakaraka Zeka. Your love has drawn me. Dear Lord, I come down to your feet. Here now I come. Take me and mold me. We're literally get laying our lives and saying, God, this my life is not my own. Do with me what you please. Help me to take the journey with you because it's only by your help I can even take that journey. It's only by your help I can even immerse myself in you. You said I should wear Jesus like a cloth. It's only by your help, by your strength, that when people see me, there's no difference between me and Jesus because I've immersed myself in him. Take me and mold me is a prayer. Dear Lord, I come. Teach me your love. That's why I come. To who shall I run to? To who shall I go? You have the words of life. Teach me your way. I cast not away my confidence of recompense. You are my great reward. Teach me your love, Jose Kabababababa. Your love has drawn me. I pasted the song. Dear Lord, I come down to your feet. Here now I come. Take me and mold me. Dear Lord, I come. Teach me your love. That's why I come. To who shall I run to? To who shall I go? You have the words of life. Teach me your way. I cast not away my confidence of recompense. You are my great reward. Teach me your love. To who shall I run to? To who shall I go? Because every time I come into your presence, Every time I behold you, I become a little bit more like you. Every time I lay down my life, every time I, I obey you, my soul is being sanctified. So Lord, I'll keep running and chasing and staying until I can apprehend you. Not because I have the strength, but because you are my strength, because you are my sustenance, because you have the one that gives me staying power. Because it is not easy to stay. It is not easy to stand firm. But God, I know that if I stay with you, there's, there's Holy Ghost energy that you give me. There's help you give me. There's reassurance you give me. So Lord, I will stay. I will immerse myself in you. 
Because when I'm immersed in you, the only thing they can see is you. So Lord, even help me immerse myself in you. Help me fellowship with you. Help me tabernacle with you. Because it's when I let my heart open that you are able to rest in me. To who shall I run to? To who shall I go? You have the words of life. Teach me your ways. I cast not away my confidence of recompense. You are my great reward. Teach me your love. Your love has drawn me. Dear Lord, I come down to your feet. Here now I come. Take me and mold me. Dear Lord, I come. Teach me your love. That's why I come. To who shall I run to? To who shall I go? You have the words of life, the engrafted word that is able to save my soul. The engrafted word that you take a piece of me and engraft your word in me. You mold me so that I can become like you. You engraft yourself, your nature in me. So Lord, to where shall I run to? To where shall I go? You have the word that restores my life. You have the word that builds me, that keeps me. You have the word that changes me. You have the word that is a blueprint for my life. The word that is life. It is a life-giving spirit. The word is life. To who shall I run to? Lord, as we are here today, as we've come to behold you, you are the one that sees our innermost heart. You are the one that sees our desires. You are the one that sees our inequalities. You are the one that knows the places that need to go and the places that you need to be formed in us. So Lord, minister to each of us in the way we need to be minister to. Show us the places that need to be broken in our lives. The places that maybe we've relied on our strength for too long. The places that we need to lay down so that you might fill us up. Because there needs to be space to fill us up. So Lord, today we let go of everything that is not you. We let go of everything that is not you. Like David said, search me, Lord. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me to the path everlasting. Lord, search our hearts. Search our hearts. If there is anything in us that is not of you. Take it. Search us, Lord. Search us. Cleanse our minds. Everything that will distract us. Everything that will take that word. That you are about to give us away from us. We don't want to only hear the word, but we want that word to bear fruit in our life. We don't want to behold the word and go back, forgetting what we look like. We want to behold the word until we become that word. We want to behold the word until we become that word. To who shall I run to? To who shall I go? You have the words of life. Teach me your way. I cast not away my confidence of recompense. You are my great reward. Teach me your love. Oh,
Ose Kabazo Shakarokazu. Teach me your way. That's not a way. My confidence of recompense. You are my best reward. Teach me your way. Oh, Baba Rakazo Shakabazi. Oh, Shala Ronsu. Oh, Zeka Baba. Oh, Shala you have a word I have a word my confidence of recompense you are my great reward teach me your love your love has drawn me yeah, now I come down on my knees. Good Lord, I come. Take me and mold me. Dear Lord, I come. Lord, teach me your love. That's why I've come. Who shall I run to? To whom shall I go? Peter said, You have the words of life. Teach me your ways. I cast not away my confidence that you'll reward. Because you are my great reward. Teach me your love. Who shall I run to? To whom shall I go? You have the words of life. Lord, teach me your ways. I cast not away my confidence of recompense. You are my great reward. Teach me your love. Lord, I thank you. I worship you. Indeed, who shall we run to? Where, where, where can we go, Father? Where can we go from your presence? It's in your presence that we flourish. It's in your presence that we blossom. Where else can we go, Dad? Where else can we go? Where else can we go? Where else can we go forever? Where else can we go? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. How are we doing? How has your week been? I'm doing great. I'm doing fine, man. It's been lovely to see you today. Divine, Jaro, Nasomta, Modesty, Tejiri. Came off. Wonderful to see you guys. Wonderful to see you guys. So, what have our thoughts been this week? Can we share love notes? You know, but I don't want us to focus just on miracles and blessings. You know, I read somewhere recently that, or rather, I had I had in a meeting that. You can't actually use what God has done for you to thank God. You know, it sounds funny, but your, our response is obedience. The things God does for us, he's not doing it for thank yous. He has promised he will do them, so he's doing them. 
So of course it's got seat to say thank you when we have a new car, a new house, a new job. But our the response that God requires in our relationship, like he does for us, we do for him, right? Is, you know, if you abide with me, I abide with you, right? It's, um, you know, you did not choose me, I chose you. And I appointed you to go bear fruit and that you should remain and that your fruit will remain that whatever you ask your father he may give you these are natural expressions of the love of god for us so it's not that we cannot say things but uh adequate response is submission it's obedience is walking with him is walking with him so I want to actually hear like real testimonies of, I went from point A to point B in my journey with God. Like he grilled me like this. I felt the burn here, you know, but somehow I was able to do this. I was able to apologize to my mom. I was able to, you know, choose eternal life. I was able to yield to God, even though it was difficult. He helped me, you know, the testimonies of our actual journeys. So does someone have something like that? Does someone have something like that? I can share more. Yes, please. Okay, so you know, this week, I had uh, this, this strange thought. And initially, I was trying to get it out of my mind. I mean, we bring every thought and imagination into obedience in Christ. But it just somehow never went away. And it was kind of weighing me down. So the thoughts was like, I was like, God, why do you feel so far away? Because, um, and it was not a true thought. I just, it was just in my heart. Like I hear, hear people say, I just felt like I'm, I know God as, um, as master, but I feel like I never really knew God as father. Um, okay. and I hear people say, oh, this wonderful communications with God. And I know God always speaks to me, uh, through his word, through his promptings, but people are like, oh, I talked to God about this, just like a, like a, a regular interaction. And honestly, I can't really say I've had much of that. So it was just a thought, I was like, well, God, I've never really known you as father. Why do you, you say that you are father, but it, it doesn't feel like that. Um, and so I was actually talking to someone and I asked the question, it was like in a young adult group. Um, and and I didn't, I didn't really get an answer, but I so I just went back to just begin to study I just began to understand like the love of God. Well, first I understood that I don't know, I just got a revelation that the just don't don't live by the just lives by faith and not by feelings. Um and I just after that, it just hit me in a new different way. And after that, I began to just see God as father, truly understand the love of God, and see that nothing can actually really separate me from the love of God. Um Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only son and I don't know I just understood the love of God in a new way from from then on and I feel like I was looking for that thought and it was not there anymore I I just felt I don't know how to really explain it but I just had an understanding I would say a better and a deeper understanding of the love of God because I felt like I understood the love of God I mean he gave Christ for, for me, for us, so we can have a new life. But this week I found myself just thinking, hey, is God really my father? What's going on? I I I feel like I felt like the son, the second son in the prodigal son story, oh, where uh, I knew God as master. 
and I've always loved to serve God in every way. In fact, sometimes I get burnt out serving God. But just understanding God as Father somehow evaporated for me. But this week, I just got a deeper understanding again. Um, and I'm grateful to God for that. So that's uh, my short testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I love, and sometimes I don't have the time for it, but I really love that we, we share, you know, we have interactions instead of us just preaching at each other. I love it because that's really all we're here for is just to grow more in God. It's just to love on God more. It's just fellowship with God. That's what this, you know, coming together is here for. It's just to strengthen your feet for the journeys that you have. You know, most of us here are leaders, so we lead other areas of colors of hope. And so when we come here, it's just like a place of rest. It's home where we rest a, a bit, you know, and can speak about our journeys and, we are also fortified by the word through instruction and, you know, study of the word. But I perceive today that we first started with a song, you know, um, that, told, that just showed me that I was on the right path of what I was going to share with us today. Then Benu just said the exact same thing, you know, about God, having that personal interaction with God. And, and that's what we're going to share today. Does any other person have any other thing to share before we go forward with our meeting today? Okay. Who feels like they know God as Father? You can just raise your hands on the on the WhatsApp. If you feel you know God as Father, you've journey with God as Father. Oh, so nobody has journey with God as Father. How about? Joining with God as friend. I'm waiting. Wonderful beyond compare. She's the ageless father, holy king. Forever you are God by yourself. You are wisdom, love, and righteousness. I join the choirs to proclaim glory to the Father of love. He's the Father of love. He's the Father of love. Okay, so nobody. Scripture says in John 15, verse 15, it says, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. You know, at some point in the relationship with God and their journey with God, Jesus told his disciples this. I don't regard you as servants anymore. You are now my friends, because I'm sharing with you my secrets. So the highest relationship a man can have is to be is to have the secrets of God. The highest relationship you and your spouse can have is to have each other's secrets, have each other's hearts. In fact, God, the relationship we have with God is scripture refers is 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 the marriage scripture for his where the bride is the bridegroom, you know so. Whatever it is you have of marriage, how it's supposed to be the union, the unity, the you know the communion that you are hoping for in your own marriage, that's what's supposed to exist between you and God. Because different seasons, seasons change. Seasons change very quickly. Like Benu said, you could have a season where you're serving and your service in your heart. It's not that like you're serving from a bad place. You're serving your father and you're actually doing it really well. And by you, 
people souls are coming to God, you know, and for you in your heart, you are giving on to God things. You are giving him, you know, you are doing right by God. What of a season where you don't get to serve? What of a situation where you are not a leader? You are not serving any particular place right now. Do you still have the fulfillment of your journey with God? Because most times when we, when it's strip of strip us of titles, we don't know who to be. That's because we have based our journey with God on that transactionary relationship of I do for him and he'll do for me. And that's the case. That's what we see in the, the story of Martha. That's what we see in the story of Mary and Martha. You know. Martha was upset that Mary wasn't joining her in the kitchen. And it wasn't as though Mary wasn't serving Jesus. It was, Mary was on the contrary, serving Jesus, what Jesus required in that minute. Let me take it again. Martha was in a place where she did, she wanted to please God. She, she wanted to do what, what would benefit him, right? But she lacked the knowledge of what would benefit God in that moment. Mary knew the heart of God and knew that in that moment, Jesus would not want her to be in the kitchen. It's not that being in the kitchen is bad. It's not that a meal cannot be prepared. It's that in that moment, what was required, what was in the heart of God? He was teaching. He wouldn't be teaching, I want you to be somewhere else. Let's assume like as normal human beings, just think about it. God is not calling us not to think, guys. As Christians, we should think. You know, sometimes when they teach you in church, it just feels like forget your brain. It just feels like forget your head. But God is not calling us to forget our head. God is calling us to actually be thinkers. When you read scripture, think about it. Access it. Try to envision what happened in that season. So, Mary, Mary um, Martha is... is, is preparing meal and yes it would like it will benefit everybody but is that what god is saying is that what god is saying in that moment is that what he needs is that what he requires he says if you give your body to be burnt no no that's not the scripture i'm looking for obedience is better than sacrifice it wasn't that Saul did not it wasn't that Saul did not have did not do something for God. He went there and he, he took some of the ornaments and he was going to use it in service to God. God asked him, as in, why not you just obey me? Like, why did you have to prepare to sacrifice things to me? Did I ask you that one? And the missing link between maybe a David and a Saul, it's not that David Saul was more wicked than David. David, as in, Conceived to take someone's wife. Put the person in, in harm's way. So it was premeditated. And then the person actually died. Then he actually married the person's wife. Like, what? Like, it, it, like, it took a while for him to conceive the thought, for him to see the sin, for him to not take the wife, then still be married to her. So it wasn't just a one of he was guided by his lust for a while. But you see, David, he will just come and minister his heart to God. He will say, Cast me not away from your presence. Do not take the Holy Spirit. If you, if you take everything from me, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. He had a place where when he realized his flaws, he will go to God, his father, his friend. He had a relationship that was deep. He built a relationship that was unique. His relationship with God wasn't dependent on his kingship or his priesthood, as it were. It was determined on his conversations with God. So he would say, Father, cast me not away from your presence. Don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Restore in me the joy of my salvation. He would have that communication with God. I wrote recently that there's no pastor. You know there's no pastor, there's no prophet, there's no teacher in heaven when we get there. 
all we have are those that have journeyed with God through fellowship. It's the closer you are to God on earth that you are close to God in heaven. The distance between you and God on earth, the distance between you and God, the closest people are the ones that had fellowship with him. They know his heart. Those are the ones that will still know his heart in heaven. That fellowship cannot be bought. It's a relationship. And it's the easier one. It's even the easier one. And Jesus said about Mary and Martha that it is the better way. It's the easier way. It's not praying, for example, and he doesn't do anything wrong. That's how he too ministers. So it's not his, he's not praying wrongly. But it's more about praying than praying like Theophilus Sunday. You understand? It's more about communicating with God. Like where you are, where you get to a place where in your shower you can talk to God. You wake up in the morning and you say, Thank you, Daddy. And you're not doing a religious prayer, you're not doing your devotion, and devotions are not bad. I hope you see. I hope the Lord opens your heart to understand what I mean. Devotions in themselves are not bad. But it's now a, let me just do this thing mindlessly or because, or routinely because some of us are really good with routines. Do you know that morality is not, morality is not, um, mor there's different between morality and being led by the spirit. People feel like they are moral and there are people that they've trained to the extent of like they are really good people. Do you know, like they are just good people. They may not be God people, but they are really nice people. And, and genuinely they are nice though. They can give you their last, their last shirt. You get. So we do the mechanical. And sometimes we have been trained to do the mechanical, but we don't even know why we are doing it. Like we don't even know if that's what God desires. So of course, eh, if we feel like if we don't strip ourselves of everything, God will not be pleased with us. Like we, we can just only wear pants. If we wear pants and we put ash on our head, God will be happy. Like if you lick ice cream, how, how can God like ice cream? It's too sweet, now. Nah? If you if you do something, if you even wear clothes, God, how can uh, good marriage? Okay, well, I know most of us we don't we desire good marriage. But it's almost like we we now align pain and suffering to what God is supposed to give us in response to our, you know, our hard work and our labor. And so we're making it mechanical. Well, he says here in John, he says, no longer do I call you servant. You are not my servant. You are not born to serve me. You are my friend. You are an heir in my kingdom. Yes, the journey to my kingdom there was that journey. Now you are in the kingdom. You actually have the access, like Benu said about the prodigal son. Like now when you come, yes, when you come, they have your servant or your king. All right? But when you come into the kingdom, let's imagine the prodigal son. The brother has come back. You have the resources of your God. You know, there's now a certain level of relationship with the king. You cannot ask, ah, king, can I get some ram? Let's eat ram suya. So you have access to that, that, that father. Daddy, should we do it for a party, daddy? Should we do that? Because you have access. So you're no longer outside. You're not a friend of God when you come into God. So in salvation, we become friends of God. We become sons of God. We have a relationship. We have a fellowship with God. And scripture even tells us that then we can ask then we can ask. We can ask. And then he would, he would, um, he would answer us. Scripture says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and I shall not, and it shall be done for you. So we have that access. So some of us, we don't ask God anymore. Like we don't ask God. But if you abide in me and abide in you, do you know that like Mary, you will know the desires of God. You will know the desires of God to be able to bring them to pass. You will find that the thing you are doing that is killing you, that thing that you are doing, that heavy labor, God, you know, it's not yours. 
it's not yours. God didn't give you that much of load to carry. He, he also has brought some rest. The things he brought for rest, you will not use them. Relationships, families, things, you know, that he brings for rest. You are not using them because you feel like you need to suffer. But when we abide with him, we know his heart. We know his heart desires. We know what he requires. And whatever he requires, he has given us grace to fulfill. So we are able to actually come into ability to even do these tasks that we do as leaders. We're doing it from a place of relationship. We're not doing it from a place of pain and suffering. So nobody is forcing you. In fact, you are even more inspired than your pastor. For instance, pastor says, oh, let's do the media like that. You, you, you are scrolling and you see something. Oh, this is so nice for Colors of Hope. And you just feel like God is saying, ah, this will be nice. Let me talk to pastor about it. It's not mechanical anymore. It's not part of your stressors. If God is asking you to be somewhere and you believe God is asking you to be there, he gives the grace for that thing. He gives the abilities for you to maybe teach. If maybe you are struggling, say, oh, one day they may call me to teach you. How would I teach? You will teach from what you know of him. You will just open your mouth and he will put words inside your mouth. You will teach from the relationship you have with him, the fellowship you spent with him. You won't teach anything mechanical. You don't need to go and do Bible study so that you can come and teach. It's the relationship you have with him. So if every day we're talking to him, every day we're reading the scriptures, every day you're, you're having conversations with, with brethren, when they just say, oh, say something like, Oh, can you just talk about love a bit? You know love. Oh, let's open to you. Just you know love by virtue of your journey with God. Oh, love. God will not set us up with things that we cannot handle. He gives us the ability for for us to be able to have, to do these things. He gives us grace. That's what grace is. Ability. So he gives us grace to be able to do these things. So there's a there's a difference between processing things from friendship from fatherhood understanding that this father has your best interest at heart then you begin to have a relationship you are not you are not too worried that you not read bible in the morning you know you read it in the afternoon or you can take your break time and read it you are not governed by the fear of i do not study my bible but instead you are enjoying the study of the word so your free time self in your car you can study it or you can put it on audio on your car as you're driving like it's not now mechanical. It's I want to spend time with God and it becomes easier. You're not too worried that, oh, I'm reading a novel. Oh, I've not studied my Bible. You know that you love God enough to stop the novel and read your Bible. God does not want us to not enjoy things. And I'm not, this is not liberty. I'm not giving you liberty because we are constrained by the whole, constrained by the Holy Spirit. You should not be doing things. There's time for everything. So you cannot have, you cannot be maybe supposed to be reading your books and then you can be studying, reading novels or stuff like that. But in a situation where you are reading a novel, why are you feeling guilty? If you would or you know that you will read the Bible, the problem is us making the novel or the thing, the center, even our relationship with our spouse and our relationship with, with you know, is making the person the center of your life and not God. Every time you decide to make someone the center of your life, in fact, it's as if you are the one that makes that the devil tempts the person because the person will make sure they hurt you. They will make sure. You cannot make anyone the center of your life. You have to make God the center. And then from that place of God and strength, then you will not give people. Then you will not love people. So you are able to take things. But when you make the person the center, when you're broken, you're too broken. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no um, um, weight on you. You're too broken. But if you're, you do it from God, if you love people from God, they break you. You can't even forgive them. You'll be understanding. You know how to understand on their behalf. You are doing it from strength. So God has never said, don't enjoy anything. Everything is, is his. And he has given it to us. Everything is his. And he has given it to us. It says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You know, James tells us that we ask we we don't we don't receive because we ask amiss. And that shows us what fellowship is. We ask amiss because we don't know the intentions of God. So you can actually ask for a dress that you use for your graduation because God knows that you want to go for your graduation and it means a lot for you to go to for your graduation. And it will not be asking amiss. 
because you know the desires of God for you regarding that thing. It's when maybe you are being selfish, maybe you've done this and you know that, ah, that's extra. You know, we ask, I mean, because it says we ask, um, we don't get answered because we ask of our selfish desires. If the desire is not selfish and it's also the heart of God for you, is that not a worthy ask? So most times we don't ask at all because we don't even think we deserve anything. And it says in John 16, 23, it says, in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in, in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Do you know God wants you to be joyful? Like, do you know that God wants you to be happy? Do you realize that the happier you are, the, the better Christian you are, like, my, like your joy will be full. There are seasons where God is asking you, don't worry, take the bus. You are stressed out a bit. But you see that God will bring relief in that season. Because he's a rewarder, you know that not long after, God will give you something that will help you to your journey. You're not made for, you're not made for struggles. You're made for submission, not struggles. It's different. We're not serving God so we can struggle all our lives. We're serving God so he takes us to high places in the spirit, and then it manifests as light in the flesh. God does not light a lamp and put it under the bushel. But for a season, you can be hidden under the bushel. For a season, God will strengthen you through things you, you learn. Learn obedience by the things you suffered. God will strengthen your heart by that boss, this thing. You become easy, it's easier for you to know, you know, um, Lagos or just, you know, know London because you've entered the bus, you know how to navigate it. So there's a return to our first love that we should do. There's a return to our first love that we should do. When we came to him, most of us came with love. When he talks to the church of Ephesus, he writes, Revelation 2, verse 1 to 7, he says, These things he's these things says he who holds the seven stars in his hands, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works. He said, you have works. I know your labor. I know your patience. And I know you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and have not. And have found them liars. And you have preserved and have persevered and have had patience. And, I have, and have labored for my sake. And have not become weary. See the good things, though. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove the lampstand from your place, unless you repent. It says, he who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. They were doing things, though. They didn't even like the, the evil people. They were doing things, but it was mechanical. It had become mechanical. They were doing it out of, they were not becoming religious. If you don't, if, if, if you didn't have a title, would you love God? Are you coming to the church because of the title? Are you coming to the meeting because of the title? Is that just the is that the drive? You want to be pastor? I mean, God can be setting you up for something like that. But what about your relationship with God? When was the last time you said, Father, hello, how are you? When was the last time you carried his spirit in your heart through the day that he's able to instruct you what to do with others? You don't make mistakes because. He's able to tell you, okay, maybe you wanted to sleep. You realize, ah, I should go and talk to that person. Person probably. He gives you memories. He gives you reminders. He shares his heart with you. And you're able to live out God. I'm the one you love. Leaning on your breast. I'm the one. I'm the one. Just to know your heart, Lord. 
and drink from your cup. I'm the one. Scripture tells us about the one God loved, the one that will lean on his heart, John. If, and if you read the letter of St. John, Apostle John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, you read the book of John itself, especially the book of John, you see Jesus in a very different light. You see the love. Not that every other person they have a good relationship with him. Because it was Peter that said, um, the song we're singing, your love has drawn me, yeah, Lord, I come. Who shall I run to? To whom shall I go? You have the word of life. It's not that they had not come into understanding that he was the word of life. But you have to come into the understanding that God is your rest. He's your father. He's your friend. Like, he's not angry with you. He just wants you to thrive. In that moment where nobody sees your pain, God sees it. God knows your journeys. You have to get to a point where you remember that God is for you. He sees that you have little strength, but you have not denied his name and you've kept his word. And that was the church that, 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 that was the church that God, that Jesus spoke well of. The church that had little strength. It wasn't that, it wasn't that um, they were buoyant in strength, but they didn't deny his word and they kept his name. It says, in Revelation 3, verse 7, it says, And the angel of the church in Philadelphia, I write, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, I write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens, who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. I see, see, I have said before you an open door. No one can shut it. For you have had little strength, for you have kept my word and not denied my name. It is fellowship. They've kept fellowship. They've kept fellowship. They've kept fellowship. That's the one he opens door for. He says you have little strength. It means that we can actually do much from little strength. It's not that the season may not be pressing. It's that in that present season, you are holding on to God. A small song, a small whisper, just his heart. You've not been able to sit down and do the Bible study you want, but you're communicating with him. You're, you're doing you're doing what. Not what Martha thinks is important. You're doing what God is calling you to do in that moment. You feel led to sing. And you worship that night and you sleep. So it's those that are led by, by the Spirit that are sons of God. We should not be... The mechanical helps us. The mechanical is good. You can put a Bible study time and that is really fine. You know. You can also serve in a church and that is really fine. Right? But in the midst of that, understand that the day you don't serve in church, the devil will tell you, oh, who are you? Or the day that you make a mistake, oh. So it has to be beyond that. It has to be a relationship. It has to be a relationship. So I'm just, I've come today to just remind us that we don't journey mechanically with God. That's not what he has called us to. He's called us to his love. He's called us to his love. He's called us to his union, his unity. We can actually have joyful life. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to ask for things. And we will not ask amiss when we stay with him. We will know what to ask for. Our hearts will beat for something that we know has, is the will of God. And we will know it's the will of God. And we're able to do the will of God. It will be tough sometimes, but we will be able to do the will of God because he will give us ability. So, Father, I just pray that the entrance of your word brings light and understanding. That it sets us in a new path to just fellowshipping with you, loving on you, enjoying of you, understanding that we are now in the kingdom of God and all things are available to us. We can leave your will because your grace has been made available to us. And even though we have little strength, oh Lord, keep us in fellowship. Keep us encouraging each other. Keep your word in our hearts. That we don't leave your presence. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Take not the Holy Spirit from me, because that's the most important. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. 
and renew the spirit within me. I want you to sing the song. Mean it. Cast me not away from your presence, oh Lord. Fellowship is my chiefest joy. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I renew the spirit within me. I just hear the Lord say, I've restored your joy. I've restored your joy. And it is permanent. You are worried the enemy will steal it with situations. No, the spirit is in you. It reminds you of all things in God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the gift of joy this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That our service to you will be from a place of love. And we'll be able to do much more for you. Through fellowship. And love. Than, than servanthood and stress. Bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a blessed week. Have a very blessed week. I feel like we should have two meetings during the week. But I don't want to propose something that is too much for us. I feel like it will refresh us to just come and meet. Short times like this. At least twice a week. You know, one on Saturday, then one maybe in the middle of the week so that it's beautiful. I'm not setting it on stone. But like I said about the prayer time, it's something I'm considering, something I'm thinking about. You can slide into my DM, share your thoughts with me. Love you guys. Have a blessed week. Thank you, Mom.